And for more on the efforts to combat Ebola, we're joined by David Quammen. David is a journalist and author of the book Ebola, The Natural and Human History of a Deadly Virus. And he joins us now live from Montana. David, thanks for being on the show. Happy to be with you. David, today we learned that the Dallas Ebola patient, Mr. Duncan, died. He was receiving the experimental drug made by Chimerix, which was a tablet form antiviral. Where do we stand right now with what may be the best drug? Well, antiviral treatments have been under development for a long time, as have Ebola vaccines. Uh, ZMAP, as we know, may have been effective in uh, the few cases where it was used. We don't know that for sure. We know that I think it was used with seven people and two of them died, five survived. Uh, the problem, Michelle, is that even if you have an effective vaccine in small quantities, it's very hard to scale up. It's very hard to mass produce either vaccines or treatments that are antibody-based tr treatments because you can't just pour chemicals into a big vat and stir it around. You can't create these things industrially. You have to grow them. You have to grow vaccines and antibody treatments in living cells. And ZMAP, for instance, but is grown uh, in tobacco plants. Well, David, this is not the first Ebola outbreak. So why have drug companies not been working on this in the interim? You know, drug companies, commercial drug companies, tend to invest their research and development money, development money on potential drugs that will have wide application be used over a long period of time by many, many people. That's how they get their money back. And Ebola has been perceived for years as this little, peculiar, scary, but not broadly significant disease that affects, it, that affects poor people in African villages, in remote African villages. And All that's right. one well, of the reasons. Well, David, now, now people are getting concerned. Now there is certainly a factor of fear. Is this good news in a way that we could see more commercial pharmaceutical giants getting in on the efforts to find a vaccine, to find a cure? If this situation uh, causes big drug companies to invest seriously in development of an Ebola treatment or an Ebola vaccine, yes, it's hard to say that it's good news, but yes, that would be a very helpful development. All right, David, there's growing concern now about how the Ebola virus can be transmitted or spread. It's believed that it's only through body fluids, but in the case of the Spanish nurse, she said she followed all the appropriate protocols wearing a hazmat suit, wearing gloves. Is there concern that the virus may have mutated to become airborne somehow? Well, people have asked that question. There is no evidence, no evidence so far that the virus has mutated so as to become um, respiratory, to become airborne. We know that it has mutated, but whether it is adapted to better transmission from one person to another, we don't know. There's no evidence at this point. Well, David, in the meantime, the World Health Organization is saying that Ebola can be transmitted via a wet sneeze or a wet cough. Is this still consistent with what we know with regards to body fluid transmissions? Are there any major implications of the World Health Organization saying that you can get this from someone sneezing near you? Well, this tells us, uh, as we've been told before, that uh, standing too close to a person who is infected um, could be a problem if that person sneezes or coughs and sends a droplet, essentially sends spittle that touches another person and then perhaps gets rubbed into an eye or into an open cut. That could constitute direct transmission by bodily fluids, yes. Well, David, in response to all of this, federal authorities in the U.S. say that from this weekend they will begin temperature screenings of passengers arriving from West Africa at five major American airports. Is this sufficient? Should this be concentrated on West African destinations only? I think it makes sense to concentrate it on West African uh, passengers arriving from West Africa at this point because, of course, resources are finite. Um, I think this is a good step. It's not necessarily sufficient, but it's much better than anything that's been done before. I think it's a, a helpful first step. Uh, it may be necessary to add other sorts of screening as they become technologically available, but at least 
temperature screening uh, of West African passengers at this point, and then isolation of those who might be infected is a good first step. All right. A long way to go in the fight against uh, Ebola. We're going to have to leave it there for now. Thank you so much, David Quammen, author of the book Ebola, The Natural and Human History of a Deadly Virus.